Welcome back to Cross Arsenal Podcast. My name is Cross. We'll come back to a brand new video. This is the Arsenal Total Access Show. We dive into the biggest stories around Arsenal in the last 24 hours. Hit the like button, subscribe to the podcast as well. We're going to be talking about the injury updates, return dates, and um, a couple of injury boosts as well for Mikel Arteta's men as we close into that Chelsea game over the weekend. Now, a, a couple of players are really coming back. A couple of players are uh, becoming much better in terms of injuries, in terms of fitness. Um, we'll, I'll give you an update on Timber. I'll give you an update on Leandro Trossard as well because at the moment, in-house, those are the two biggest stories and those are the two biggest injuries to be worried uh, about. The likes of Saka, the likes of William Saliba we're going to be talking about, but it looks like Mikel Arteta and Arsenal do not have a lot to worry about, well, well at least for the you know for the time being. We have a couple of, uh, I think, three, four days before the international break is fully over. At the moment, Mikel Arteta and Arsenal are really in a very, very good shape. And I want to ask you a question, one simple question. Uh, how would we, and, and how should Arsenal actually deal with uh, um, you know, William Saliba's injury because you know look he's one of the players we need to rotate but we don't have a, we don't have so many options uh that we can rotate him with so do you think we you know ben white um a couple of times should be coming into center back and probably william saliba should be uh playing maybe one game a week or two games a week because you know this business of playing a game every three days i don't think arsenal will keep uh william saliba fit and of course if you lose william saliba you don't have jurian timber it's a big problem. Do you think we should exclude William Saliba from the, uh, you know, from the small competitions, FA Cup, Carabao Cup, um, and, and potentially, guys, potentially, um, in some of the games that you feel Arsenal don't need him as much. It's like, like I would say, um, I, I can't say the Champions League, honestly, I can't say the Premier League. But if we played Sheffield United at the Emirates Stadium, if we played Sheffield United away from home, do you think Arsenal should realistically? Uh, rotate William Saliba with um, Tomiyasu, with uh, Kivio, with um, uh, you know Benjamin White tacking into centre back. Look, I, I want your thoughts there. I really, really do because Arsenal losing William Saliba means that. Um, our title hopes will be dented a very, very huge blow. Right, let's get into it. Let's start off with the big man himself, William Saliba, and the injury update. Now, of course, we know that he withdrew from the squad, um, from the French squad that was going to be taking part in the, uh, you know, international, um, you know, international duty, and he did withdraw due to injury. But according to Football.London, his return date is is expected to be this weekend uh, against Chelsea on October 21st. So we expect him to be available. We expect him to be uh, very, very much available for Arsenal as we take on Chelsea. I think with Saliba, it was just a toe injury. It was um, a foot injury. Uh, and more specifically, it was a toe injury. I think um, it was either in the Manchester City game or it was an injury that he had actually suffered prior to uh, the Manchester City game. And he couldn't actually go on. He couldn't go into, in, into international duty. And I liked it. I really did. Because for me, Saliba is one of the most important players at Arsenal. If you actually, if he has a knock, if you have something, if he has something small, even if we were playing Man City, even if we are playing uh, Liverpool, I would leave Saliba out, out of the squad. I would rather lose one game without William Saliba than lose William Saliba for uh, a month or even two or even three. So he's going to be coming back against um, Chelsea. He's going to be coming back uh, this weekend on the 21st of uh, October. And that is huge. That is massive. I mean, we might look at Chelsea as one of the clubs that uh, don't pose a huge threat at the moment. But Raheem Sterling, Nicholas Jackson, Mikhail Modric, uh, they are young. They are electric. They are very, very talented. Um, and these are players that have a lot to prove to the manager. Um, Mauricio Pochettino is a new manager. He's... um. Uh, you know, he's been handed this kind of product uh, and, and project and he's got to deliver. I think these players will try to prove a point. And we've already seen Chelsea, they're trying to do whatever they can, right? The likes of Armando Broja coming into the squad, scoring right away on his debut. The likes of Jack Jackson, um, he's almost scoring in every game, you know, he, he plays in for Chelsea now. Um, Raheem Sterling is really good. I think William Saliba is needed if Arsenal are going to uh, be as dominant and as good as, um, as we want to be against Chelsea. Now... I actually don't believe, and, and I don't think that without Saliba, we don't beat Chelsea. It's completely not uh, not an option. I think Arsenal would beat Chelsea without William Saliba. But the importance of Saliba and um, why you need him is you have that defensive assurance. You have that kind of defensive shield uh, and you know that credit in the bank that 
you know, you have a fast player who can deal with the pace of Mikhailo Modric, Raheem Sterling, and Nicholas Jackson. And then you have an intelligent player who can deal with players like, um, again, Nicholas Jackson and Cole Palmer, who are very, very quick and very, very, you know, intelligent as well. So we have Saliba back. Um, it's a massive injury boost, especially as we get into the UEFA Champions League, right? Uh, that, um, th that severe fixture... I don't know how important it's going to be. And when I get to do the preview, I don't know what I'm going to say. But I think if Arsenal are really going to focus on uh, getting anywhere in the Champions League, that is the game. That is the fixture. You have to go to Spain and you've got to pick up three points. And then you have to be at the Emirates Stadium against Sevilla and pick up three points. Six points against Sevilla. Not an easy ask. Not an easy task to um, ask your team. But we've got to go with that. We've got to roll with it because that is reality. So William Saliba, available for both matches, available for both games, um, is a massive boost. The other massive boost that we have to talk about is Bukayo Saka as well. Uh, now, according to Football at London, they're saying that his return date is unknown. However, close sources indicate that Bukayo Saka will be back in training this week and will be back uh, you know, on the pitch as well this weekend against Chelsea. Now, this is the problem with uh, Bukayo Saka, and this is why I, I really do not understand why, Chelsea, why Arsenal are hiding the information. Uh, and even the um, national team, the English national team, when they actually checked him, they, th they thought he couldn't go. They thought he couldn't actually uh, you know, have another round of games at the moment, but they didn't tell us what was actually wrong with him. So according to Football Don London, Saka is, is suffering with two injuries, a thigh injury and a hamstring injury as well. I think there is a foot injury in there. I think there is a toe injury in there. I think there are so many injuries in there, right? Because the amount of times Bukayo Saka is stepped on, the amount of times Saka is, um, you know, uh, caught on the ball, like countless, absolutely countless. So if I was to think about, um, you know, uh, a Saka injury, if you ask me what, what is suffer Saka uh, suffering from, I would say a foot injury. I would say a toe injury because these guys really step on Saka. And, I mean, you don't blame defenders. You don't blame Saka. That is his talent. That is his ability. He's got to carry the ball. He's a ball carrier. And when you're a ball carrier, those are the kind of injuries you actually pick up. But what actually frightens me is the hamstring injury and thigh injury. I think the hamstring comes from a lot of game time. It, it comes from a lot of uh, football without resting. England have played him to exhaustion. Arsenal have played him to exhaustion. Um, every every time this guy is available, he's playing. Even when there is no football, he's actually playing for some for some non-league for something, right? Uh, so the hamstring injury uh, really really um, frightens me and freaks me out because it's a muscle injury, and those ones. There is nothing you can do about them. There is nothing really. You cannot say, well, um, he's nursing in a hamstring injury and therefore he will play. You will actually just make it worse. But Saka will be back in training this week. We expect uh, expect Mikel Arteta to give us um, a press conference react, a press conference update, especially on Friday um, at 9 a.m. Right. So uh, we'll get more on that one. But Saka should be back in training and should be available against Chelsea. It's, it's a game I want him to play. It's a game I want him to uh, return to because Chelsea, um, kind of porous, we should say. I think Arsenal will really create a lot of problems with Chelsea. We can score a lot of goals against Chelsea, and we can, you know, we we can send a statement out there that it's not only the small teams that we will be beating, but we can beat the big teams, including Man United, Manchester City, um, and Chelsea as well. So I want him to play this game. I want to have him back. I don't feel comfortable with an Arsenal side without Saka. I think Gabriel Jesus did very well when he played there, and. Anyone who says that Jesus didn't do well, I mean, you have a problem. But is Saka better than Jesus on the right-hand side? Absolutely. Is he our most important player? Absolutely. Is he our most productive player this season? Again, absolutely. So we need him in that squad and we need him to be back. So this week, you expect him to be back in training. And the moment he steps his feet on grass, I'll be the first guy to let you know as well. Okay, Leandro Trossard is one, again, that's uh, that we are worrying about. He has a hamstring injury, and um, he, the Chelsea game might be coming too early for him. Right, so I think with Leandro Trossard, he's one of those players that 
he's kind of injury prone by the way he's kind of injury prone but his injuries do not take a long period of time so these two weeks i expected that they should be enough for him to uh you know grind over that hamstring injury and come back and become much better but according to sources leandro trossard might be late and his return date might be um too uh, you know the, the chelsea game must, might be too early for uh his return date I'm not really afraid of this one, uh, especially when, in terms of not having him. I've talked about Emil Smith Rowe in the morning, and I have to say that, guys, I'm really, really disappointed um, in many of the Arsenal fans who think that Emil Smith Rowe has nothing to offer to the club. But I think with uh, with uh, Leo, he's a player that has you've got to manage his minutes and Mikel knows now knows this you've got to manage his minutes right he's you know he's getting older and his um you know his um injuries at this small small one week two weeks three weeks um you know uh, those small injuries that keep you for you know some kind of short period of time but you expect him to be back for severe home and away you expect him to be back for Sheffield United and you expect him to be back for Newcastle uh there are a lot of games we have a, a bigger squad I wouldn't really be afraid afraid of Leonardo Trossard, even if he didn't play for Ch uh, against Chelsea for us. So, might not be available for, uh, for us against Chelsea, but you expect him to be back against Severe, that is midweek, or you expect him to be back the following weekend when we take on Sheffield, and then the, uh, the, 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 the week after when we take on Severe in the second leg, okay? So, Trossard, nothing to worry about, really. Um, the game just comes a little bit too early, and if Mikel can rotate them very well uh, be be between Trossard and Gabriel Martinelli, I think everything will be all right. I, I don't think there will be something um, to be worried about. Still talking about Gabriel Martinelli, um, uh, just a little fitness update around him. Um, he was at 100% fit against Manchester City, and Mikel confirmed that. The player wanted to play in that game, but there was a question of whether do we allow him to play in this game? Do we actually uh, prohibit him? And that is what Mikel said, that the team and the medical team uh, talked to me uh, talked to, talk to Martinelli and they told him you're coming too early for this game Manchester City uh, is too early for you and the player actually insisted and he decided that he wanted to play you know that game uh, you know 100 minutes but then he played 45 the Chelsea game on the other side could actually be the actual return date for Gabriel Martinelli. So we expect Gabriel Martinelli to be fully fit. We expect him to play um, 100 minutes, and it's going to be his full return. He comes back at a very, very crucial time. Trossard is injured. Um, Saka, Saka is injured. You need Gabriel Martinelli. You cannot have a team without Trossard, without Martinelli, and without you know, Bukayo Saka. It's... It doesn't make sense. It's, it's, it's disastrous. It's purely disastrous. So, Gabriel, Gabriel Martinelli, expect him to be the, your star man against Chelsea as uh, Saka will be just coming back from injury. Um, and Martinelli, of course, played those 45 minutes against Man City. I think they really helped him, right? They really, really helped him um, in terms of confidence, in also in terms of, you know, sending out the me a message to the medical team that he's ready and okay to go. So, uh, Gabriel Martinelli, fitness update, 100% fit for the Chelsea game, should be, uh, you know, training very, very very well and his re full return should be uh this weekend and of course uh in the uefa champions league too uh, i think martin has not played a game in the champions league has he because the first game trusted played the second game uh, against FC Lons, Trossard played as well in that game. So you expect him to make his debut this week in the Champions League and expect him to uh have some some good performances against Chelsea this weekend. I really, really do uh, fancy Gabriel Martinelli against that Chelsea uh, Chelsea defense. Um, Thomas Partey, the good news with Thomas Partey, guys, is that um, although he's not played a lot of minutes ever since he came back from injury, we don't have an, a report from Ghana. And that is, that is the update. That is the positivism. And that is, the, uh, th that is what I'm, tr I'm trying to uh, hope for. I don't want to listen in to an uh, to an update from Ghana that Thomas Part has picked up an injury. At the moment, he's still out in inter on international duty. He's doing very well. Um, I, I could say Ghana have done well. Yeah, Ghana have actually done well. So Part as well. You expect him to be fully fit for the Chelsea game, and uh, we might have selection problems, but. Their selections, I'm happy to have. All right. And lastly, Jiren Timba. Of course, the optimism continues uh, around Jiren Timba. Again, uh, Football to London reporting that um, it is 2024. 
early probably uh, later uh, now less probably i think the probability levels are what we are talking about with julian timber initially it was about well julian timber will be coming back in um late late 2024 now his therapy and whatever he's done in terms of uh, quick recoveries and everything we expect him to be fully fit by at least march maybe or april i mean ag again it's um we, we are dealing with um we, we are dealing with timelines that are very difficult to predict we're dealing with timelines that are very very um unpredictable but i can say Julian Timber might have a part to play this campaign. He will have a part to play uh, this campaign. I would love to have him uh, in the later parts of the um, of the of the Premier League. There is, uh, I think, in April we play Chelsea. After Chelsea, we play Man City, and then um, I think in March, in May, sorry, we will play Newcastle. After Newcastle, we'll play Man United. So it's going to be some kind of hectic schedule for us. And I think Mikel Arteta should win the title before we get to April. By the time we get to April, Arsenal should have um, at least a 12-point lead if we are going to win the title. A 12-point lead. It's non-negotiable. But of course, I'll talk to you right in the next one. Timber um, is expected to be, uh, you know, coming back early. But of course, the biggest updates are on Saka and, uh, you know, Saka Saliba and Gabriel Martinelli. You expect them to be fully in action right this weekend. I'll speak to you right in the next one.